something to settle in. Okay, so the swing goes behind the back. We're going to move it to the leg, do this sequence. One leg at a time. We're going to actually start out with the knee, just to test. Okay, get comfortable. Swing a little bit from side to side. And once you feel like you're in a good spot again, the swing is right behind the heart. That would be the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. Then we're going to allow the swings to move into the ankles. We should leave any touch to the or like the back. We're going to do both, but I just like want to do one at a time to give people a little chance to stretch the hamstring. Awesome. And then second leg. Awesome. So this is floating Buddha. So even with our hips straight down, this is very important. Everyone likes to go like this. Keep your hips down, but lift your heart. You'll notice the arch and the curvature that happens here in the spine. So when my arms are straight out, this is called starfish. Starfish. Starfish, a five-pointed star. Okay? I'm going to squeeze everything together, and I'm going to bring my hands to prayer and namaste in front of the heart, around the leg loops, and then you're going to lean back. Lift the hips high. Head is relaxed. This is called namaste. Exhaling, drop the hips. Open up, starfish. Beautiful. Okay, there's a whole vinyasa sequence that we're going to do here that's really fun. But what we're going to do is we're going to bend. Everyone follow the same sides, even if we're mirrored, okay? So we're going to bend the left leg in. I'm used to teaching backwards, so I might say it wrong and then just correct me. <laughs> I, my, it's when my dyslexia comes in handy. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I said it backwards and it's correct. This is awesome. Okay, hips are still heavy, okay? We're going to get a good, this, I call, this, this is called floating pigeon. Arms are always on the outside. So this is our anchor point, right? So we have one anchor point here. We have a second anchor point here. So as we roll along, I'm going to just cue you guys and be like, okay, where are the anchor points? And then you're going to be able to show me that we always have at least one anchor point holding us. So right hand is going to grab, pull that in. So foot is coming towards the chest. And then I'm going to traction the knee down. I like to press and give a little extra space there. Notice which part of the body we're stretching right now. Anybody identify what that is? Okay. It's actually the piriformis. Paraformis is one of the hardest muscles to stretch, and this is this particular floating pigeon really gets in there. Everybody feel that? Anybody know the paraformis? Yeah. It's that crazy tight spot <laughs> right above uh, the hip. That's yeah, joint. Beautiful. Second, second way of stretching is pulling the knee in, and now we're stretching the glutes. Right now you can feel the two different versions that can happen here. Yeah, just kind of float along with us, hun. Straighten out, come back into five-pointed star, and then switch sides. So now we bend the right foot in, left hand grabs that leg loop. We're going to first start. Very good. You're doing great. We're going to start by pressing, just kind of tractioning the inner thigh down, all the way out into the knee, until you feel the stretch in the paraform. Now notice you'll have an intensity here. If that bothers anybody, you just lean back. Okay? There you go. Let me get a little bit more space. This is such a cool, that just really finished the, like, yeah. the, the sacred yeah. dance. Yeah. Yeah. Well so yeah. 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 yeah, and everybody can still see it. It's great. It's just holding it mm -hmm. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so awesome. Beautiful. Now pull that knee in. I really stay with the hip stretches for a while because there's a lot happening here. And again, opening, aligning, releasing. That's why we're doing the, doing the yoga. And even on the floor, you get some really great stretches. This is totally different. We're using gravity. We're letting our weight do the stretching. So let your hips drop. That's how you get the little bit. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. People are always like this, and I'm like, you know, that's okay for engagement. But this is where it's at. So um, I also tend to call this the money pose. So this is like, this is just all money right here. It's like, oh. So yeah, so the different things that we said are stressed. Okay, cool. Let's switch back to the left. We're going to pull that leg loop in one more time. So we go through five-pointed star, starfish. Grab for the leg loop. Now this time, so we're going to just speed it up a little. 
but normally I would do that like three times on each side. Right? Now we're going to move into side trade. Bottom of the foot goes on the inner thigh. So our left hand is completely free. We press our hips forward. Beautiful. It's like, it's like tree pose, right? Side tree. But like we have angel wings here, so we're like, ta-da! So it's also called flying ninja, because your hand is pointing from your fingertips to your toes, one straight line. Mora, straight line. Yeah. That's OK. She's like, I'm cool. <laughs> Yay. So this is one of my favorite poses ever. So depending on how engaged or relaxed you want to do it, you can either call it side tree or flying ninja. Beautiful. And then coming from center, switching sides, grabbing for the leg loop first. If you don't hold on to this leg loop, it's a different pose. Side tree, press your hips, and then let your arms fly. So point your toes, a nice long line of energy. Really feel what's happening through the whole torso here. So the right torso is really getting the big stretch. Does everyone feel that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the more that you point your knee down towards the ground, the bottom knee, you get that hip flexor growing area. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now we can also play in this, play in this pose and actually bend the, the top leg, the standing leg, and reach back, reach back to the foot. This is more, uh, yeah, supermodel. <laughs> incorporate the play. So depending on the um, experience level, I might just stay in a simple side tree, but if they're feeling really playful, I reach back and grab the foot. And notice how the, the body has a little bit more of a sway. Then. Beautiful. Nice. And then it's just like, ah. <laughs> Nice. All right, coming back through center. Now be very mindful of your neighbors, but make sure they're the legs. It's pretty okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. I'm just getting a little creative, that's all. Nice. So in between poses, I usually like to add a lot of play, a lot of swagger. And just notice what it does on the spine when you give yourself that momentum. This is how we're really creating space effortlessly in the body. Yeah. And feel free to support your neck. That's great, your neck will tell you. <laughs> We're going to come into Baddha Konasana. Everybody know Baddha Konasana? Mm -hmm. Bottoms of the feet together, knees out wide. So knees are as wide as you can get them. Keep them there. There's a tendency to kind of collapse. There's another way of utilizing the swing where I hook my ankle. So just pull the leg loops over the heel. Thank you. This way the swing is not. The leg loops aren't going to go anywhere. I like this for some poses, and this one in particular, it helps people to not collapse. So, arms open wide, I always say this because if not, there's always somebody who brings their arms in and then they will fall. And we play safely around here. <laughs> reach up as high as you can. Reach up, reach up, reach up. Press the feet together. Lifting the hips, arch and lean back. Kind of like namaste. But oh. This should be, and again, this is the mmm pose. Mm. Flying monkey is uh, a crowd favorite. So you can really stay here pressing the feet together, keeping the knees out wide. You can do a little bit of pull up action. This is going to prepare us. Hands up really high, Lisa. So we're going to do a couple pull ups here. This, is, this action is going to prepare us for the soup to bottom. But for now, we're just going to play with some arm strength. Cool. Now we're sitting on our feet, right? Awesome. One more time. Knee back, stretch, and lift up. Awesome. Now keep holding on to your leg loops. Do not let go. It's a habit. And then open up wide. Nice. Now if I didn't have, I'm just going to show you, you guys can stay where you are. If I didn't have to hook the heel, what happens for some people is, let me be exaggerated, is they're going to go, no, they usually go like this actually. They usually like have one leg over there. Blah, blah, blah. So it's a little trick, just hooking the, hooking the heel. You can also put the swing at the arch of the foot. Just notice that it will move if we don't hook it. Nice. And then from here, we can come into our, our uh, wide straddle splits. If we want, if we're not there yet, just think happy baby. Just think happy baby. Right? Okay, cool. Depending on 
and their experience level. Now we're going to do that whole sequence again, just showing you the, the foot variations. We're going to bunch the leg group up at our arch. Okay? So leg loops are at the arch of the foot. For some reason, when I do these variations, the arch of the foot is challenging for some people. I prefer the arch of the foot, but if they have any trouble, hook the ankle. The only thing with the ankle is it will slide up on some things. But arch of the foot is more advanced. It helps you kind of engage your legs. Okay? So from Bada Kanasana, Bodhi Bada, we're going to reach out wide. We'll reach for the legs and leg loops as high as possible. Press your feet together. Arch and open. Pull yourself up. Sit on your feet. One at the feet, one at the forearms. 
You're holding them by your forearms, right? Yeah. Nice. So from here, we're going to open up the legs again. Wide straddle, arms follow. <sighs> One more time, squeeze everything together, not to stay. Back and lift. Exhale, sitting back down. Open up, find the five footed star. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more to this sequence. So just watch me at first, and then we'll do it together. This is coming into our first round of inversions. So squeezing everything together, come to Namaste, release the arms down, we come into ladle. You can see they're called lo lotus or ladle, depending on <laughs> the day. <coughs> so from here, from lotus, we're going to flip back up, come to sit, from here, knee back, release the arms, tops of the hands. This is the palm, this is the top. Top of the hand on the floor, swing around, back up. So let's give that a try again, okay? Hands to prayer and namaste, straight legs. Lean back, hold on with your forearms. Keep everything as is, except start to release your arms. Keep your legs straight, feet together, toes pointed, swing the arms around, beautiful. Tops of the hands on the floor. It's like a ladle, right? You're pouring the energy out through your fingertips. Everybody good? Yay. Now, like you're swimming, swing your arms back around, come to seats at the same time, and then end in front. Beautiful. Isn't that lovely? So that would be part of, uh, we have, I have several vinyasa flow sequences. That would be one of the vinyasa flow sequences that's for everyone. Now notice, I say it's for everyone, but only about half the people are going to really be comfortable doing this. The reason why they're going to be uncomfortable doing this is not because they can't do it, but because it takes a tremendous amount of trust to hold on by your waist with your head aimed towards the ground in an inversion. But yet, this is one of the best supported inversions that we can come into. We're just letting the energy drain out down the body. So you'll have to do a lot of cheerleading. You're like, you can do it, you got it. You know, it's, you know that's, what, that's really all we are, shamanic shoulders. Awesome. So from there, we're going to transition into the chillaxin sequence, where we place the leg loops. Everyone good? Everyone good with the floating Buddha? You guys did awesome. Um, chillaxin, similar sequence, leg loops are at the knees. This is a little bit, this is my beginner, beginner sequence. Floating Buddha is a little bit more challenging, mainly because of the hamstring stretches that people are experiencing and the strength that it takes to come into the standing splits, which intimidates some people. If we're working at the knees, totally cool. If somebody has some sort of injury or issue here, they can actually do this with one knee on the ground. Some people feel a little nervous at first with the floating. We can do this one leg at a time, okay? Get into that, but I just wanted to show you the variations going from the therapeutic to the restorative. So again, in the chillaxin pose, if you feel any irritation here, while the underarms are getting used to it, are you doing okay, more? Okay, mm -hmm. I have another, and I have these bit bubbies if you want to borrow one. Oh, that's good. I think that my sneaks too high, because it's just, it um, feels like it's always riding up towards my head. No, that's not those things. When I actually touched the floor, I was like this far away from the ground. Really? Let me see. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead, just, well, just wrap your legs around and come into a full inversion. No, that's right. So okay. your head's almost hitting the ground. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Since I tested it and we're about the same height, I'm like, yeah. no. <laughs> it's, you could always have it lower, but then your head would hit the ground. I think you're okay. That that riding up is just it's 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 gravity. It's gravity doing it. Good job. Okay, cool. So we're in relaxing. Our hands are behind our head. Our elbows are out wide. We're really just coming into the most relaxed, restorative. Fun, playful, swing and slider. Just let your knees explore the space and play. Heart is open, hips are heavy. Just lean back. Just imagine yourself at the beach. And be nice to have a little bit of cold breeze. <laughs> are we able to open up that back window by Alan so it's not blowing yeah. mm -hmm. Let's do that. So he is like, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Cool. So from relaxing pose, we have um, a whole thing 
that's a sequence that we can also explore. We're going to, and like I said, we'll sit down and write it all out, so don't worry about missing a thing. I'll demo, and then you can ask questions, so that's what we'll do this afternoon. He's all like, ah! Oh. He just got, he just got the sensation. Oh, yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. I like the heat. Is that the Lisa? I'm good either way. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got a good cost for you. now. You're welcome. And he's like, the beat for a Mariel yoga class. Oh, no. <laughs> sweaty, sweaty yeah. swing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we We'll, we'll just let you take that one home. It's okay. There, and, oh, that reminds me, the swings are washable, which is the best feature of them, is that after each class or workshop that I do, I wash them all. Mm -hmm. And um, they've also been outside for a lot of different events in my uh, outdoor playground. And you can see they kind of turn a little grayish in time, and then I just re dye them. And you can, if they come in every color, I just like black because they go well with <laughs> the motif. Um, so from the chillax and pose, swinging side to side, just playing and opening up the hips, really focusing on the side body here. We're going to come and re-ground. So we let ourselves kind of come to that plumb line to center, reaching our arms around. You know, I, I, I know you guys know it, I sound redundant, but if you don't say it, somebody's going to go like this and fall out. Can you see? I lost my anchor. Okay? It's the same with the grounding. We're going to keep our anchors in our hooks. So child's pose, floating child, is wrapping your arms around the leg loops, pulling them in towards you, resting the forehead in the nape of the hands, and just let yourself sink. So this is a closing pose, right? So this is a deep exhaling and releasing pose. This is also a good time out if anybody needs a break. Put them in a floating child and let them just hang as long as they're happy. We can also do child's on the floor. And then when we expand, we're inhaling, coming into a five-pointed star with the hips heavy. My hips are staying heavy. I'm shooting the energy out through my fingertips, my toes, and my heart is blossoming towards the sky. Awesome. So from five-pointed star, starfish, squeeze everything together, come back into a namaste. Now that we got namaste down, we can go a little bit deeper, press the backs of your knees into the leg loops so you can press your hips up and lift and arch. Go deeper. All right, now from Namaste, we're gonna go right into ladle. So start to release your arms. Keep the lower body as is. As your head points down towards the ground, the swing will just slide into the waist. Bring the energy down. Shift a little to get the swing into the sweet spot in the hips. Now bend your knees, this is new. We're going to come into bow pose. So reach back, grab your ankles. If you can come into the full pose, it's okay to virtually reach for your ankles. You don't have to grab them. But if you can, press your hips up, lift your heart, heart straighten your arms. It should feel awesome. Take a few deep breaths here. And then when we're ready, we're just going to use our hands to assist us back up to sitting. So guide yourself back up to chillax it nice and slow. Now everyone has a different level of openness in these poses, but anyone can do them, okay? So really just allow people, if somebody is here and this is their back bend, just be like, that's great. <laughs> you know? Don't try to get them to go all the way back or grab for their ankles. Or if they're like this, that's totally fine. Just on to like pretend. But if somebody can go into the full pose, then you can really engage. The idea is that it's a supported back bend, um, a supported <laughs> bow pose, which means that you're creating a little bit of a space in the lower back with the compression of the swing, so it is um, allowing the lower back to be healthy and expanded while the heart opens. Most people are doing back bends from their lower back and not their heart, and this is how we start to retrain that. Okay? So let's get back into the, the chillaxing flow. From child, wrap your arms around, exhale, drop in, deep. Inhaling, expand, starfish. Exhaling, prepare for namaste. Inhaling, lift, exhale, deepen. Inhaling here, exhale, release your arms, coming into ladle. Nice cleansing, deep breath here. Exhaling, bend your knees. Grab through your ankles. Take a 
few deep breaths in though. From bow pose, start to release your feet. Use your hands to guide you back up to sitting. Relaxing. Beautiful. Thumb to relax and pose. Just start to, to sway and swagger in the space a little bit. Neutralize the spine. Awesome. Now, as you start to get into the inversions, that's when we start to feel that recalibration that's happening in the endocrine system. So people's bodies start, like I can literally see the brain chemistry changing, okay? So as that starts to happen, I will either pick up the pace if, if everyone's kind of popping, or I'll slow it down. So you just kind of feel for your people to notice how far you can take them and just go as slow as possible because otherwise you blow fuse. You can, you can see when you're going to blow fuse. <laughs> One more time. Are we good with that? So inhaling here, exhaling, child. Good. Just the frequency of frequency will get the um, pathways open for our memory. Starfish, span. Namaste. Release into ladle. Bend the knees to this. Beautiful. Start with your hand. Start to exhale and inhale. So now we're going to add on to that sequence and come into skydiver. Skydiver is a little tricky for people. We have, we're starting to learn the pivot points and how to leverage our energy. Our hips are our pivot points, okay? So pushing our hips forward, we come forward. Pulling our hips back, we come back, okay? So over time, it'll get easier. Bring our hands to prayer and namaste. Press your arms straight. Then push the leg loops away. Bring your hips forward. That's why I gave So I'm going to give you guys a little heads up about the underarms and, and the backs of the knees. 
These are the um, intersections for the yin lines of the body. Most people have a yin excess that's creating a yang deficiency, which is all of this upper body pain and discomfort. So the kidney points, which govern the lower back and the knees, are behind the knees. If somebody has a lot of pain there, it's because the kidneys need to be rebalanced, and that's what we're doing with the leg loop. So honestly, after a while, it actually feels good. The same like we were talking about with the lymphatics and the hub here. This is opening up a heart, small intestine. There's so much happening here that like literally I could go on and on. We just want to kind of take it slow with the information and just get the, <laughs> get the fly put and fly down. But it's actually really, really good for the body. And all the fascia and everything will open up. The same when we get into the hip flexors. Another major hub when we start doing the forward folds. So we're going to all do this together. You ready? Inhaling, arms out wide, exhaling, come into child's pose. I'm going to go a little faster. Release and open, starfish. Squeeze everything together. Lean back into namaste. Release, kind of to ladle. Bend the knees, bow pose. Cleansing deep breath here. Inhale, help yourself up. Come right into Skydiver. Nice. From Skydiver, bend the elbows. Bend the elbows. Find the other flash. Awesome. Beautiful. That's more of a koala thing. Yeah. I don't feel anything now. Nice. Really good. So that's the chillaxin flow sequence. Can you check on the camera? It doesn't look at all like it's uh, pointed over this way, but it's okay. This one is kind of the best way to get out. That's that side. So. That's a whole other pose. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Which um, the high diver um, is totally fine because a lot of people that wear slippery clothes, they're going to wind up with their leg loops here. There's a whole other sequence. Woo! See? Open your arms and you know. This is okay too. Most people just wind up in high diver. Totally fine. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so with the chillaxing legs, we're going to come into dancing Shigo sequence. Okay, so my favorite sequences. We can make this easy or we can make it challenging. So we're going to, we're going to stick to the therapeutics, but there's a lot of dynamic movements that all of, just like yoga, the advanced pose, poses are in the basic poses, okay? So today we're sticking to the basics, but we're really going to ramp it up and learn some of the dynamic movements too. The first one is, um, um, well I call it bow and arrow, but it's also just um, standing splits where we have our arms straight and we press the leg loops out. Hold on to your leg loops, leg loops at the knees, push your arms straight. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the toes. Awesome. Good. So this, this thing up is, uh, is uh, a really intense pose. See if you can press your hips forward more. There you go. So that's the space most people are avoiding, is that little undulation right there. So from um, bow and arrow, we're going to bend the right, we're going to bend the left knee, keep the right leg straight, and roll onto the top of the thigh, right above the knee. Make sure the knee is happy. There you go. So this is our flying lunge. Okay. So from our flying lunge, we're going to bend the back leg, come into the full dancing shiva by grabbing the foot. Awesome. Usually I'll hold on to the, to the leg loop either by um, hooking or just by cutting. Just keep the back leg straight and that's good enough for now, Alan. That's good. Awesome. So cool. So from dancing shiva, we can stay here or we can stra straighten the front leg. We're moving towards Hanuman. Okay, Hanuman is when you grab the toe. It's a little far. Yeah, That's the full toes. Nice. So release. Sit back. And neutralize, right? Chillax. In between the poses. That's right. Really good. Shaking a little bit. That's really. You no, know, it's okay. It's it's actually us rebalancing.
in the nervous system. And then the more that we squeeze everything in, it gets really steady. Okay? So flying lunge, bending the right knee, left leg straight, roll. So at this time, roll onto the top body if you can. Just roll your hips, your pelvis down towards the ground. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cool, so we can stay here. Um, I'm gonna show you one more variation where you can actually release that leg and just use the floor. Try that one. So this is a great stretch and enough of a, yeah, perfect. So if anybody wants to be grounded, this is completely legitimate. <laughs> and we encourage for everyone to stay exactly where they're most comfortable and then build up to the next level. Okay, so from the flying lunge, we're going to bend the back knee, you can hook, dance with Shiva. This is like really one of my favorite poses, it stretches everything. Isn't that amazing? We can also straighten the front leg and press that leg loop away. Okay, we're going to put on, grab into the front toe. And then we release, sink back, and relax. Yay. So cool. So we went through the floating Buddha, we went through the chalatsu flow, we went through the dancing Shiva. We did our squats and our lunges and our circles and our twists. We're going to save the forward fold sequence and the upside down bob for the workshop. We'll, we'll incorporate a little bit new into the workshop, but this will also be a repeat. Okay, so come out of the pose, nice and gentle, one leg at a time. I use both hands to really help guide the foot. Once I'm grounded, I release. We haven't done many inversions, but if somebody needs to, just take a moment and pause. I don't tell, you know, just don't pop out of the swing. You know, really just take a moment, get grounded, and stretch the hip. 